So, um, oil. Wow, this is fun. So J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs are all saying, you know, that 125 oil we were predicting, I think it's going to be 140. So do they say this, Martin Armstrong, just because they're betting that oil is going to go up and they're going to make money when everybody else believes them? No, not really. No. Oh, Our good. computer's okay. showing it's going to go to about 250. <laughs> oh, come on. What? Hello? Really? Next year, we could be looking at, at 230 to 250 even. Uh, how about this summer? What does Socrates say about this summer? Like, you know, anything? It's just, Well, I haven't looked at it that short term, but uh, the problem, again, you have just people doing things uh, politically. I mean, in, in all honesty, if you look at Ukraine, it's, it's, a, it's just mostly propaganda. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, here you, oh, we're under attack. Look, the first thing, if you, if Putin really was going to try and conquer Ukraine, what he would do the same thing we did to Iraq. The first thing you do is you go in, you take out the power grid, then you take out the communications, and you take out the water supply. And the central He's bank. Right, and the central bank. They took that, didn't they? JP yeah, Morgan? I mean, yeah. you... <clears throat> Look, Biden's wife went to Kiev. All these leaders are going to Kiev. That shows it's not a war side, you know, zone. It, it, it's just, you know, come on. She's bringing flowers over to his wife. He's in the Donbass where the Russian population always was. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just really kind of nuts. Um, well, Mr. Armstrong, I'd like to uh, understand. So the, the word that we got, and tell me if this is correct, that Putin... Um, wanted to make sure that NATO get into Ukraine and he wanted to get a deal for a long time and the NATO and the United States and globalists didn't want that. Is that close? Well, not really. Okay. What happened was, most people don't realize, but Ukraine was the third largest nuclear power in the world. They had really? more nukes than China. Really? And huh. so when the Soviet Union broke up, Yeah. That was the Belgrade Agreement, that they would return all their nukes to Russia. NATO agreed not to invade, mm -hmm. and Russia agreed not to invade as long as they remain neutral. What year was this? That was uh, not after, uh, was uh, basically right after 1991. Okay, all right. When Russia collapsed. Okay. <clears throat> then when you had the... Um, Maidan revolution, and there was uh, the Minsk Agreement. All right, the Minsk Agreement said that they would allow the Donbass and those regions to vote on their independence because the country was breaking up, mm -hmm. and that was brokered by you know uh, France and Germany, and Zelensky's refused to comply with that. Now you can Google um, the you know. They want to own, most of the, the things that they put out about, about Putin or really a lot of it's propaganda. Um, there are two things that probably prompted him to go in. One, we, there was a, a Munich security conference and on February 20th, they sent over Harris instead of the secretary of, of state. I mean, I mean, you know, she doesn't know what she's doing on anything. Sure. And she was there and said, you know, oh, gee, you know, um, Ukraine should join NATO, which was a complete violation of the Belgrade Agreement. But then Zelensky stood up, and you can Google this, too, if they haven't taken it off the web yet. Uh, Daily Mail in Britain covered it. He, on February 23rd, he stood up and said that we're going to uh, reestablish nuclear weapons uh, in Ukraine to, against Russia. Putin went in the next day. Um, and, you know, they want to pretend that, oh, he, he was trying to invade Ukraine. Like I said, he clearly didn't do that. Um, otherwise, you would have, you know, taken out the power grid, the water supply and the communications. But he didn't do any of that. He basically stayed with the Donbass region, which is what he originally said he was doing. 
they were, you know, Facebook and that crowd, they were being promised uh, to go against Trump and they would be able to be banks with their digital currencies. And that they would be replacing uh, the banks. Uh, You can probably Google and find some articles that the Federal Reserve will take direct deposits from people. Hmm. All right. Um, If the Federal Reserve took direct deposits from people, you're now competing with the banks. So uh, Facebook and and the rest of these with their digital currencies, they were promised that. That's why they were all against Trump. It was just follow the money. That, and that Facebook digital currency thing, that thing just fell apart, didn't it, somewhere yeah. along the line? Just fell apart somewhere. This is another great question from Linda. She's in Seattle. Oh, God bless Seattle. You need help there. Uh, does your guest believe that Bitcoin long-term survives anything, everything? Mm. Probably not. Probably um, not, really. No. Who, who could bring them down? Aren't they peer-to-peer, Martin Armstrong, and kind of the way it's set up? Look, I don't see that as plus or minus, honestly. Hmm. Uh, If we went into war and just look at what the U.S. did to Iraq, the first thing you do is you take out the power grid. Yeah. Okay, so where's your digital currency? Oh, I see. So if you bring that, yeah, well, then you're done, right? Game Um, over. I think still, historically, it's going to come back to physical, you know, uh, medium of exchange. Um. And I guess an example was uh, probably the most dramatic collapse was that of Japan. The emperor, uh, every new emperor that came in for a few of of a run, he devalued all the money that was in circulation to 10% of the new ones that he issued. (laughs) Um, So he got to the point that people would no longer accept Japanese coins because they would be devalued. Mm Mm-hmm. So they started, money was used as bags of rice, and they used Chinese coins. Uh, China uh, expanded that way, but Japan actually physically lost the the ability to issue money for 600 years. No Japanese coins for 600 years, because because the emperors were screwing around so much. Hmm. Uh, Nobody would trust them. Not until the Meiji period where coins ever, you know, reappeared. So, uh, you know, I think that's, you know, if you get into like a war situation, things of this nature, um, even cutting off the energy that, that um, you know, the Biden administration is doing. They're talking about rolling blackouts uh, in the United States maybe this summer. You get a blackout, what good is Bitcoin going to do you? Or any digital currency, regardless uh, of who makes it. But it wouldn't have come back on and you'd still have your Bitcoin. It was off. It was off yeah, I'm not off saying line, it was right? that. Would, yeah. Hmm. But you have, um, I think largely the government, <clears throat> knowing these people the way I do, they would just seize Bitcoin and everything else, anyhow. You think they could? And convert they, it they to their make, digital currency. They, oh. We're going to convert um, your Bitcoin to your our central bank digital currency. Whatever. Uh, and they would, you know, can do it by an executive order. And Biden would do it in a second. All right. But um, <laughs> then <clears throat> they want the digital currencies because blockchain is not private. They can look at if I gave you 100, they can see that who gave it to you, where I did, where I got it from and who you give it to. Sure. Um, sure. It, they can follow the whole chain. That is like their dream. Um, so I'm not thrilled about you know you know Bitcoin. I like a good old hundred dollar bill. I can give you a hundred dollar bill, and nobody knows where I got it from, <laughs> and nobody's going to know where you yeah. next guy you gave it to. I mean, you, you you know, like we're numis- losing all privacy with digital currencies. Do you, do you like uh, numismatic coins or uh, numismatics? Yeah, I mean, I think that that's why there's so many $20 gold pieces around and things of that nature, because most people don't realize, but FDR, he was a stamp collector. But Teddy Roosevelt was a coin collector. Yeah. So when he confiscated gold, he exempted numismatic coins. He did. Yeah, he did. 
Uh, that's why they're still around. That right? was Teddy. Um, Good for Teddy. Gotta love him. Yeah, Teddy, you can look at a 1907 $20 gold piece. There's mm-hmm. the very first year, they're very high reliefs. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was an ancient coin collector. The ancient coin coins were very high relief because they were hand struck. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they tried to make them like that. That's what he wanted, and the machines would break. So 1907, for a little period of time, um, the very high reliefs, and the date was in Roman numerals. Wow. Um, you know, I think part of the the COVID lockdown in China, in Shanghai, yeah. was deliberately and political uh, for the purpose to create higher inflation. Shanghai was is like the number one port in the world. But uh, they just lifted it, I think, today. And it's gonna, uh, that'll cause oil to rise as well once they start using yeah, oil. Yeah, all uh, this, yeah. you know, if, if in waging war, hmm. you can probably buy them on, um, on eBay. The Germans <clears throat> uh, counterfeited British pounds. Did they? And they were dropping them out of planes <laughs> on the people. <laughs> in there. And, and what you're, you're trying to do is destabilize their currency. You're trying to create the inflation. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. It's a war tactic. Mm. So I honestly think that that's what China was deliberately doing, uh, shutting down Shanghai in total lockdown to shut down the port to push the inflation even higher. I think it's a war tactic. Mm. Many people conjecture that this climate change is all about more about control, that solar and all these green things can never provide the energy that everybody needs. So if they if they run this thing up, then they can control the energy and control us even more. Do you think that's a viable argument? It, I think it's more uh, to uh, jettison the, the United Nations to this one world government uh, yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will see on our, uh, if you uh, <clears throat> Google our site, there's a clip on there of Holland, H O L L. Uh, the old president of France, mm-hmm. uh, standing up alongside Merkel in <clears throat> uh, in the European Parliament, admitting that the whole purpose of the EU was to create one government to, to eliminate war in Europe. Oh, this theory's been around for a long time. Yeah, they yeah. think of one government, then there you eliminate war. Mm-hmm. Just look at the Roman Empire. How many civil wars did they have? It was one government. <laughs> Hmm. Um, hmm. we had hmm. a civil war north versus south England had a civil war one government it doesn't matter but this theory is another academic you know utopia um, and these people are pushing uh, the United Nations that the United Nations uh, we need one government to fight climate change you now have the WHO saying we need one agency to fight disease yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, these people are just power hungry. Mm. That's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't see this as, as viable. It, it is, it's absurd. But, you know, they only look in, you know, at what they want to achieve. That's yeah. it. They don't look at the practicality of this. It, it, it appears to me, just from the cheap seats, Martin Armstrong, from your host here, that I don't think these people are going to stop. They're going to keep going until they just implode or... I mean, yes. right? They're just not going to um, stop, are they? They're not going to stop. No, they're, they're, they're just you're not. asking them to suddenly admit that everything they believe for their life is wrong. <laughs> it's um, like a religion, right? It's like, okay. It is. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not like, going to happen. Not going to um, happen. Wow. Uh, not going to happen. Look, they. this is what our problem is. This is why they wanted Biden. They got somebody that will just sign whatever they stick in front of his nose. Sure. Uh, sure. You got to take sure. the napkin and wipe the drool off at first. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but but this is what they wanted, you know. They got does it. he really come up with these ideas? No, no. I, I think it's like the old rap song uh, with this, you know, slim, real slim, you know, shady, you know, shady. Please stand up. I mean, yeah. nobody knows who the president really is. Yeah, I have no idea. Whoever's writing up these things and sticking it in front of them. 
Your man in Florida is pretty cool, DeSantis. He was talking about the WHO the other day, and he says, I don't care what they tell me to do in Florida. We're not going to do it. So, you know, just knock yourself out. This is probably where we're going, right? Texas, Florida, Tennessee, yeah, Oklahoma. Um, we're just going to do The United our own States will probably split. split. Yeah. Uh, it will split, you know, usually along the same historic lines that, you know, were before, north versus south. Um Although, you know, a lot of people have said it was slavery and stuff like that. It wasn't necessarily that was mm-hmm. the real uh, bottom line issue. Uh, it was it was states rights from many perspectives. Yes, sir. But, and most of the soldiers that fought in the war, they didn't have slaves. Uh, it was it was more of we're not going to tolerate the North telling us what to do in the South. Right, right wrong or indifferent. Yeah. All right. All um, right. And back then, uh, you know, cotton and things, this this was all manual labor. So, you know, if you are taking away the slave labor, you are basically putting them out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was, from an economic standpoint, it was, it was different. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, it, this is, you know, I mean, Slavery was was been around for a long time. It was wrong. Uh, that's how communism came to power in Russia. Russia had serfdom. The difference between the two, uh, slavery, I could sell just you. <clears throat> serfdom, if I sold the farm, everybody that was there went with it. Oh, good. <laughs> you were attached to the farm. I see it wasn't an individual per se. Hmm. Um, so serfdom was, um, you know, you belonged, you were part of the, the machinery of the farm, basically. And and uh, so serfdom ended in Euro- in Russia in 1861. That's why Marxism worked, because suddenly it was like, let's go get the rich. They got everything. These people had nothing. They didn't own anything. Wow. They had always been just like machinery on a farm. That was yeah. it. So uh, freeing them was not necessarily the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> yeah. You know, there wasn't McDonald's to go down and get a part-time job or something. You know, it was like there wasn't that kind of a structure there for employment. Yeah. Um, so Marx in saying, you know, let's go get them. It made the least sense. Um, because the landowners, they was passed down for, you know, generations. So it was different. Whereas Schwab in saying that uh, you own nothing and be happy today is you different because we all own our houses, their cars or whatever. They own nothing back then. Yeah, nothing. Um, 24 is probably a major earthquake politically. Mm-hmm. Globally, and, and it's more than just the United States. Yeah. Putin, Putin is up for election. Zelensky's up for election. The head of the EU is up for election. Whoa. I mean, you just go around the board. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. All right. I don't think Putin's going to um, be there for 2024. I think it's health issues and things of that nature. Yeah, we've heard about that. Yeah, his health um, issues. Yeah. So I'm concerned because without Putin there, you get one of these hardliners. Uh, and like I say, just read the, the declassified documents. They're from there, the, right? Uh, Under him. The Clinton Hardcore. administration. They're online. Hardcore. Yes. Yeah. They say, listen, Putin is not hardcore. He Whoa. is more democratic. Hmm. And if you look at one of these other guys, I can tell you, they've, they've even suggested just nuking Kiev and then saying, okay, fine, who's next? Jeez, that's not good. Boulder Bluff. That's not good. What would happen? So do you do think we that, then send something because of Kiev, and then they send something to New York? I mean, is there is there any way of telling that Putin really does have uh, serious issues going on health wise? Do we know? You'd see rumors and I don't stories. know. Our computer does not like what's after twenty twenty four. I think we're heading into a yeah. into world war after that period. Oh, good. It's going to turn up aggressively next year but look the u.s has been way too arrogant uh, 
mm-hmm. with the world. Yes, yeah. And years. yeah, it's it, it's just it's going too far. And so I think China and and Russia are basically drawing a line in the sand. Says this, this is enough. Hmm. Um, so next so the year is going to be a Yeah, next year is going to be a mess, right? It's yeah. I mean, look, you got Biden in there as president. Come on, um, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's just a disaster, complete disaster. Yeah, really a mess. Well, Martin Armstrong, thanks for being here. I'm sorry I take so much of your time. My goodness. He overstayed your. I overstayed my welcome with you, but thanks. It was it's really fun talking to you. And you go to Armstrong Economics, right? You can sign up for different. I do a monthly thing. I don't know what do I pay like twenty bucks or something for extra stuff. I don't even know. What I it think is. it's fifteen. Fifteen bucks, something like that. But I get so- extra stuff, so I like that. And uh, Armstrong Economics. So say hi to Socrates. Uh, let me know who's going to win the twenty. Uh, sea biscuit in the fourth race at Pimlico. Maybe he'll can make some money here. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Mr. Armstrong. Thank you, sir. Really appreciate oh, it. Thanks. It's for always coming. nice to be with you. Thank Take you, care. Bye, bye. Martin Armstrong, Patrick Timpone, One Radio Network.